So our example that we're working through today, this is based on a project that one of my honours students ran. Um, and so it's a simplified version of the experiment that she set up um, and the data are simulated data. So it's not actual data that she collected, but it's based on the kinds of things that she was investigating um, and the kinds of effects that she found in her study. And the research context here is one that's looking at pain, looking at individuals' experience of pain and specifically the psychological impact or the psychological contributors to people's physical experiences of pain. And there's two general research questions that we're identifying or that we're addressing in this particular research study. The first one is whether mindfulness can improve individuals' negative experience of pain. So pain is something that nobody enjoys, or most people don't enjoy anyway. Um, so part of this research project was looking to see whether getting somebody into a mindful state, a mindful mental state, can actually improve their experience of pain, can make it a less, a less negative experience. And the second part of a question was looking at the impact of other kinds of pain, specifically individual's somatic symptom burden and looking at the impact that that has on their expectations of pain in an experimental task. So somatic symptom burden is something that you're going to be learning about in your um, health psychology lectures and somatic symptoms are just different kinds of symptoms that everybody experiences that aren't directly linked to a specific physical cause. So it could be something like headaches, it could be something like insomnia, it could be something like back pain or neck pain, it could be abdominal pain, it could be feeling nauseous. Everybody has more or less degree of somatic symptoms of their just general tendency to experience somatic symptoms. So this part of the research question is, uh, is um, identifying the relationship between your level of somatic symptom burden and your expectations of pain. So how much pain you expect or how much discomfort you expect to experience um, in a pain induction task. So the first independent variable here was mindfulness and mindfulness was experimentally brought about or experimentally induced um, through the use of an audio. So participants would listen to an audio as part of the experiment. And I'll explain more about the experimental design in a slide or two's time. Um, and this was designed to bring about a mindful state or a non-mindful state in terms of a control group. So it's an experimental manipulation of whether mindfulness was induced or not. And it's a between subjects manipulation, which means that people were randomly allocated to being in either the mindfulness group or the control group. So individual participants in this experiment were randomly allocated to either being in the mindfulness group or the control group. And the mindfulness group got an audio which was inducing this state of mindfulness. So it's just they had to sit in the experiment and listen to somebody talking them through um, an audio, like an audio recording to bring about the state of mindfulness. Whereas the control group also had an audio recording to listen to, but their audio was trying to bring about um, or trying to replicate a natural state of mind. So not bring about mindfulness. And I'll give you an example of the kinds of things on the next slide or two. So the second independent variable is the individual's natural level of somatic symptom burden. So this is a non-experimental variable because people weren't randomly allocated to groups. These are naturally occurring groups. So it, it's an individual differences variable. It's a variable that's based on your natural level of either having high somatic symptom burden or low somatic symptom burden. And the experimental setup, because this is a study that's looking at pain and people's experiences of and expectations about pain, um, is using an experimental pain induction task, what's called the cold presser test. And the cold presser test is something that is very commonly used in psychological research when we're looking at pain, people's experiences of pain, because it's a very consistent and simple way to bring about a very uncomfortable experience for individuals. So what it involves is people to put their hand, it could or a foot, but most of the time it's a hand, into an ice cold bucket or tub of water and to try and hold their hand in that icy water for as long as possible. And if you've ever done anything like this before, you know it's a very, very uncomfortable thing to do. It's a lot of discomfort and pain that you experience, but it's a temporary um, experience of pain. It's not any kind of lasting pain. So it's a great way to bring about a painful experience in an experimental setup with no long term ne negative implications for the, for the participants. So that's what the task was. 
So the key variables in this experiment were somatic symptom burden, as I mentioned before, and this is measured as both a, com it's a combination of both a count of how many symptoms the person experiences, but also how severe those symptoms are. And it's about 14 or so different symptoms that um, are included in this measure. And it's things like headaches, back aches, insomnia, stomach aches, you know, neck pain, um, abdominal pain or things like that that people can experience. Um, it's a categorical variable and specifically it's an ordinal variable because we're going to, going to have a high and a low category. And it's a dichotomous or a binary variable because there's only two different categories or two different groups. So these two groups are no or mild somatic symptoms versus moderate or severe somatic symptoms. So all of our individuals, all of our participants are broken into either having no or mild somatic symptom burden or moderate or severe somatic symptom burden. The second variable that we're interested in here is our experimental variable, and this is our mindfulness group variable, our experimental condition. So as I said before, participants listen to an audio that either got them into the mindful state of mind or a control state of mind. And the kind of thing that the mindfulness um, instructions talked about was to get participants to focus on their breathing, to focus on the present moment, to go, don't get caught up or attached to any particular thoughts that come into their mind. So this is to bring about this mindful state of mind, mindfulness being focused on the present moment, not being attached or not evaluating any thoughts that you could experience. And the control condition um, was a similar kind of audio, but instead of trying to induce a mindful state of mind, was this particular um, control audio, which is called a mind-wandering condition, was just trying to replicate people's natural just general state of mind without any kind of interference. So it told participants to think about any thoughts that they were thinking about, to just think about whatever comes into their mind, to not try to change their thoughts, just to do whatever it is that they want to do at the time. So that was our control condition. And that's also a categorical variable because we've got two different groups of people and it's a nominal variable and also a dichotomous or a binary variable because there's only two levels or two different conditions. And that's the mindfulness group versus the control group, the mind wandering group. And then we've got a couple of different rating scales. And this is particularly looking at individuals ratings of their negative affect, so negative emotion or negative mood. This is a it's a composite variable, not a categorical variable, a composite variable um, that was made up by a, a range of different kinds of negative affect items. So I was asking participants to rate how anxious they felt, how uncomfortable they felt, how unhappy they felt, how displeased they felt, how much pain they were experiencing, that kind of thing. Um, and it was measured di two different times. The first time was asking them about their expectation of the pain induction task. So this is called negative affect one. And this is asking participants how they will think they'll feel during the task. So how much negative affect or negative mood or negative emotion they think that they will experience, how much they'll expect to experience. And then it also measured the reality or the real experience of their negative affect. And this is called negative affect two. So this is after the task is over, it asks them to report on how they felt during the task. So how anxious they felt, how uncomfortable they felt, how displeased they felt, et cetera, et cetera. And this is a numeric variable and it ranges from zero to 10, zero being not at all, 10 being extremely. Um, and it's a variable that was measured twice. So we've got the expectation and the reality or the actual experience to so negative affect one and negative affect two. And then our last variable here is called dispositional mindfulness. And this is a variable that's looking at individuals natural levels or natural tendencies towards mindfulness. So it's a trait measure, a dispositional measure of their indiv individual tendency to be mindful in their everyday life. And this is a numeric variable, so it's, it's a score on a numeric scale, and it ranges from about a score of 80 to about a score of 170. And it's made up of a number of different items that make up this composite scale. Okay, so as you can see, there's a number of different variables that are involved in this study. 
There's a number of different kinds of hypotheses that we're going to have, which we haven't got into yet, but we will in a second. And a number of different statistical tests that we're going to be using to address each of these different hypotheses. So it's a more complicated example than the ones we've been looking at so far, but it's definitely a more realistic example in terms of looking at the context of a single study and having multiple hypotheses and therefore multiple different kinds of tests that address those hypotheses.